Here's a special bonus episode with Tim Tebow answering some of your fan questions. So this one is from Scott Klosowski, who's a futurist. Do you see technology as being a blessing in the world or not? It's all based on how we use it. I think there's technology that can be used for good, and I think technology can be used um, also in a harmful way. And, um, you know, we fight against it a lot for children that are being exploited all over the world on technology. But then we also um, know people that are using it in great ways. And I think technology is just a tool. And um, the question is, are we going to use it for good or are we going to use it for bad? Uh, next question from Vince Pacente, who's an Olympian bestselling author. I know that Mr. Tebow is a man of faith. What aspects of football overlap with and parallel with his beliefs? Well, I think um, football is not who I was. It's what I got to do. And there's a difference. And if football is who you are, then the day you're done, your identity shot. And too many days, my identity wasn't football, wasn't baseball, wasn't sports, wasn't, you know, being liked. And it's still something that I have to deal with because it's so easy but i'm so grateful my identity doesn't come from in what i do my identity comes in who i am and whose i am and being so grateful that we can have an identity that is based in a relationship with christ and when that is the your identity then it's the same yesterday today and forever because your identity is is wrapped in something that is never changing and that's what i'm so grateful for Next question is from James Denny with Salesforce. What's one good habit you wish you had and why? One good habit. Um, I wish I had a better habit of not biting my nails. I wish I had a better habit of throwing the cans away when I finish. Um, I like <laughs> ahas and LaCroix and all the sparkling waters and I set them down. I'm getting a little bit better. I'll set them down. And I'll literally be like, Demi's about to, to say something to me. Pick it back up. Shoot. And so I'm getting a little bit better. Uh, you know, but one of the things that she's like, well, why can't you just throw it away during the commercial of the game? And I was like, well, why can't I throw it away after the game? You know? And so <laughs> it's like one of the first arguments I lost and I was like, okay, you win. <laughs> well, probably won't be the last. Uh, next one. Uh, next question is from Jerry Harwood, who's an author. How do you keep yourself normal despite being in front of the camera so much? Um, I think it also goes back to um, to my faith, to understanding that um, we have all fallen short and but God, but for the grace of God and always um being grateful for God's grace and God's love and God's mercy and God's sovereignty um, on all of us. And I think um, that every single one of us is unique, is gifted, is one of one. There's no person that's better than anybody else. We were all created in the image of God and we are all loved. And I think understanding how we were created and what we were created for then not only changes us from the inside out, it also changes the way that we view other people and the value of all of humanity and how every single one of us um, is so infinitely valuable and infinitely loved and infinitely cherished by the God of this universe. Uh, this is from personal fitness guru, Christopher McClintock, who I'm sure wears a lot of plain white tees. Uh, what advice would you give to the underdogs out there? That hard, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work as hard. So if you're someone that you might not be the biggest, the strongest, the fastest, and that doesn't necessarily mean that eventually you will be. But what I do believe it means is if you take someone that is a little bit more talented, but every day you outwork them, you outgrind them, you're more disciplined, you show up every day. And eventually when it gets really hard and they flinch, they hesitate, they slow down, you don't then eventually you might get the chance to beat them. And I'm someone that's always um, loved the underdog. I always loved it. March Madness or, you know, Sweet 16 or whatever it is, because you love it when the will and the heart and the discipline shows up. And, you know, we can't control everything, but we can control those things. Awesome. Okay. Now, one last question. This one's for me as a, as a kid's coach. Now, whether you're talking to high school athletes or five or six-year-olds who are just starting sports, what advice would you give them as they approach sports? I would I would say um, that don't do it for the joy of someone else. Mm -hmm. Do it because you love it. Do it because it gives you joy. Do it because it's what you're passionate about. Do it because it's something that when you show up on the court or the diamond or the field, it's something that fulfills you. And... Mm -hmm. Um, and it's so easy to even parents to do it for parents or do it for siblings or do it for coaches. 
And, and it's not wrong to want to please other people, but to be, to sustain the drive it takes to um, deal with the hardship of sports, there has to be a big part that is fulfilling for you, that is truly something you love. And I don't mean that you love what it gives you because there's a lot of people that love what it gives them. Oh, I'm a high school football team. It gives me a, this, this, and this. No, do it because it's truly what you love because in the hard, the dog days of it, that's also what's going to sustain you. Well, thank you so much for this. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks Absolutely, for being here. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Great. Thank you for joining us for the Beyond Speaking podcast. To learn more about today's guests, visit premierspeakers.com. Make sure to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen.